Hey, it's Phil coming at you again, man. Yeah, long time no see. Hope you're doing all right, for sure, for sure. Yeah, let's get back into this transmission. Last time in video 17, we set the end play clearance. Super important. Check it out again if you haven't watched it already because we're going to pick up where we left off there and not show the end play clearance because we already did it. But it's super important, so make sure you do it, definitely. Yeah, this time we'll, we'll show you some special tools, right? A holding fixture and why that's going to be important. We'll line up the parking pole with the rear output gear. Super important when we're going to set up and we're putting in our clutches and steels. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you how to do that and what the tools are. Also, when you're going to put that low reverse clutch housing in, if you don't have that red handle tool, man, it's a bad day. But maybe you don't have the scratch for it. So maybe you get the black plastic tool that's kind of brown actually because it's 30 years old and it's brittle and stuff but maybe you don't have the scratch for that either i'm going to show you a free way to actually do it it's still frustrating but not as frustrating as not having either one of those tools those tools take seconds literally to uh, mount it in and without it you're looking at uh, massive frustration but yeah i'll show you how to do that for sure also snap rings man yeah the bevels go up the bevels go down what is a bevel what does it look like i'll show you for sure and hey I found this great set of snap ring pliers for the output shaft. You know, that little tiny snap ring that goes on there. Again, another royal pain in the butt to get on there. But hey, I found this set of Nipex, or is it Kinepex? I never know how to say that, actually. But this tool is the bomb, man. Yeah, I'll show you how to use it. And again, you could do it without it, of course. But hey, why not, right? Anyway, yeah, check it out, man. Check it out. Look over my shoulder, man. We'll have a blast for sure and get some work done. All right. To reinstall our assembly, uh, we're going to want something that fits onto our output shaft right here. And what we're going to do is hold it into the case. There's two types of uh, tools. The factory, quote unquote, used. Kent Moore tools. Uh, this one right here, it's basically just an angle bracket. Very simple. And a screw in the end with a pointed tip. And what we do is we take this piece and that goes into there and it goes onto the bottom of the case. And this piece right here fits into the bottom of the output shaft and simply holds it so we can move the shaft up and down in the case. And I'll show you exactly how that uh, works out. But again, it would go like this. mounted onto our case. The other tool works the same way, but is shaped uh, differently. I think this one was made by ATEC or something. You would take this uh, screw and you'd screw it into here. And then this piece would go onto there. And then we'd move the output shaft up or down. Very simple to use. Uh, instead of using this, you can make your own angle bracket metal. You can even use a piece of wood if you wanted to and just get a screw, put it into the end. Instead of this piece, you could use a yoke, right? Like a drive shaft yoke that would fit into your output shaft, like it will at the end of the day in the car, right? When the car is mounted, your yoke comes here, your drive shaft comes out in this direction, right? So you could use a yoke as well. Again, get creative, but just get something so that it holds it in, and I'll show you how it mounts on the case. First things first, hopefully you've had your transmission cap mounted in there, protecting it up since you did the case over. You wanna make sure that your seal is installed already. Again, go back and look at the case video and you'll see how I installed the seal. Basically put the seal there and you can use a two by four if you don't have the proper tool or a driver and that'll put the seal in for you. Make sure you lose a little bit of RTV around the ends as well. But again, make sure that that seal is in before uh, we start stuffing the case. Again, if it's not in, you have to use a special tool because the output shaft is gonna come up right here and it's gonna block you from hammering something down just like it would when it's mounted in the vehicle. So again, be smart, put the seal in right away. Now what we want to do is mount our bracket. Again, I'm going to be using uh, this one. 
What we want to do is mount these uh, two holes with two screws, uh, 3 8 16, which is 3 8 uh, coarse, uh, fits perfectly. It goes into the cross member uh, mounting bolts. Take your uh, other piece, the piece that holds the transmission output shaft, insert it into the bushing as well as the seal and then go ahead take your two bolts and mount it if you don't insert that extension into there as you'll see later once this bracket's mounted it's not going to fit and you're going to have to uh, do it all over again yeah i've been there done that and again tighten it up uh, no need to mass massive muscle this Again, don't be stripping things. It doesn't have to be that tight. You're only holding the output shaft in there. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and flip it over. And you can see our bracket is mounted here with our bolts. And we have our screw on the bottom here, which of course turns and would push up the shaft, which is located right there going in. So again, all this is doing is pushing our output shaft into the housing and that's how we're going to be adjusting it by turning the screw on the bottom here and raising the output shaft. Now what we want to do is take our output shaft, make sure your bearing is on there from our planet assembly, put it onto there. Again, our output shaft as we looked at. I'm gonna take that shaft, the whole shaft assembly, go ahead and drop it down. Careful you don't damage that bushing. It's on the bottom. And get it all the way down there. And now it's resting onto our tool that we just put there. Now that tool's purpose, again, is to raise the output shaft up or lower it down as needed. That's the only purpose of that tool. I'll show you why we want to do it and how we want to adjust it now. This is the ring gear that's on our output shaft, remember? And there's bumps right here on the end. We want the center of these bumps to be aligned with what we call the parking pole. Right, the parking pole means when we're shifted into park, there's a piece that snaps and locks it in here so that the transmission doesn't let the, the wheels move, of course, and then you're in park. So again, we want the parking pole to be in the middle of these teeth. Here is the shifter, right? We have the shift linkage on the side, which would attach to our gear shifter eventually, right? It comes through here. And here's the part that moves. This right here is park. Reverse, neutral, drive, low, blah, 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 blah. Right, so when it's all the way up, we're in park. Now that moves this lever, which you can kind of see right here. Right, it attaches back there. Right, follow it down. All the way down. Then behind this bracket, is where the parking pole is located. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right here. Watch what happens when I shift it into park. See this piece right here? It slid in and it was locking into our ring gear, right? We're out of park. Now we're sliding into park. Let's go ahead and remove that bracket and that'll give you much better vision into what we're referring to here. Simply two screws that hold it on. And again, that'll let you see exactly what we're talking about. Be careful, of course. Don't let it snap out. This right here is the parking pole. See how it slides over there? Okay, here's another angle. 
Again, we're looking for the ring gear, the teeth on our ring gear. Hopefully you can see them right here to be centered onto the parking pole. Let me go ahead and move the parking pole into position. There we go, you can see we're in position and see how we're still a little low, right? We're not lined up in the center. It's more like the top is lined up with the top of our parking pole. So I'll go ahead and lift up our input shaft. All I'm doing is turning the screw on that fixture. I'm going to keep going up till we're just about in the middle. And now you can see we are indeed in the middle. So again, that's where we want to be. And that's the purpose of that tool and where we want to set up our output shaft to begin with. Now let's go ahead put that bracket back on. Again, the purpose of the bracket being off was just to show you. Next up, we're gonna to wanna to put in our planetaries. Again, we're just going through the stack that we used in our last video. Um, since I'm using a rollerized uh, ring gear for my rear, I'm not gonna be using this washer since I'm using a rollerized assembly. If you're not using a rollerized assembly, which you probably are not, uh, go ahead and put some tranny lube on here and again there's tabs you can see the tabs the tabs go into the holes like so and then put it on again I'm using a rollerized assembly so I'm not going to be using that one go ahead and put your planetary assembly down in there and again once you get it down there what you want to do is just turn it Line it up nice and straight. Should fit in there. And you can see if you hold the shaft, it should spin nicely for you. Next thing we want to do is take our low reverse clutches and steels in our wave and go ahead and mount them in there as well. Now there's six clutches and seven steels and as always you want to soak the clutches first. You'll notice on the steels there's a large gap here and also on the other end there's a large gap. The large gap goes right here on this end you can see it'll only fit one way so that's fine there's no upside down or right side up and then after that take your soaked clutch go ahead and drop them down then your steel again with the large gaps one up and one down and then a clutch And this is where it really helps to have that holding fixture because it keeps the planet in the center and it makes it uh, much easier, right? This is in the center because we're putting it around the sides. And go ahead, keep going through. Clutch, steel, clutch, steel. Getting your stack. By the way, we're using Coeen steels here. And we're using uh, regular Borg Warner clutches. You can tell they're coating because they have a, like a black uh, color to them. 
Do you need to use choline? Absolutely not. We're doing it because it's a high performance application. And steel and clutch number six on there. And steel number seven. Then you want your wavy steel. There's our lowery clutch. It's got four tabs on it. And we're mounted all the way down. Next, we want to take our snap ring. It's the super thin one. It's a, a very thin, easy to compress ring. It's more a seat than it is a ring, but again, it's a snap ring, the very thin one. Go ahead and mount that snap ring down in there. And again, it fits in the grooves. Go ahead and push it down. Once you get it partially the way down there, go ahead and use the screwdriver tool that we made early on in our videos, as you may recall. Right, we just took a regular cheapo screwdriver, cut a little notch in the end of it. It's great for this, uh, putting in the snap rings as well as removing uh, the snap rings. Go ahead and just get a grip on it. Slide it all the way down. Till you get her all the way in there. And that should seat all the way down on the snack ring groove. Again, if it doesn't seat on the groove or the groove's too high uh, where you can't put it in, go ahead and use your tool and lower, lower the output shaft. Again, if you lined it up so that it was halfway on the parking pole and the uh, output uh, ring gear, then you should be fine. Uh, that's the importance of using uh, that tool or something similar if you have to use a yoke, for example. And it also holds this output shaft uh, steady so that we're able to put those uh, clutches in as well as our steels. Otherwise, this uh, output shaft wobbles around and it becomes a bigger pain in the butt. Do you need that output tool? Absolutely not necessarily. Um, but again, it's good to have and it makes your job a lot easier. Next up, we want to put our low reverse clutch housing in. And again, in my case, in my case, I'm using a rollerized system. So I'm going to take my bearing out and I'm going to use my low reverse clutch tool. Again, highly, highly recommended to use this tool. Uh, putting it in without it is going to be a royal pain in the butt. Uh, and I say that in all honesty. So you'll see what I mean in a second. But anyway, what you want to do is take the fitting, put it into the hole. Then you'll take the tool. There's an arrow, as you can see the arrow there. And what we want to do is line it up with one of the slits. Go ahead and push it in. Again, lining it up with the slit. Push it in. And then turn it. And now the system, now it's mounted onto the tool and we'll take the tool and insert it. That tool comes in two flavors, by the way. The red handled one, which is far better. And there's also a 30 year old plastic one. That works uh, similarly. Uh, go see video number two, where we actually remove that. And I'll show you how to actually use uh, this one if you can't get your hands on the red one. Again, the red one is far, far better. This one's plastic and it tends to break after 
30 years. It's very important to note when you're inserting it, there's a hole. Try not to block the camera right here. Hopefully you can see that. There's a hole right here in the front. That hole right there needs to line up with the hole right here. So this hole right here needs to line up with that hole. So when you're putting it in, again, this hole, you want to face towards the front. Okay, so make sure that those two holes are lined up when we're putting it in. Take our system. The hole is right there. So we'll rotate that around so that the hole again is in the front once you get it there what you want to do is jiggle it and make sure that it goes all the way down and just jiggle it wrap it back and forth while pushing And once it fully seats, you'll be able to tell because the O-ring hole, the groove right down. The groove right down in there is where we're going to put our, our snap ring. Right, so you want this low reverse clutch housing right below this snap ring hole. Again, kind of hard to see, but you'll be able to tell. Once you get it there, go ahead and rotate the handle. Rotate the handle so that the arrow is aiming right in the groove. And you should be able to pull your tool And take your fixture pull that out as well if the tool either you don't have it or for whatever reason another way to get the uh, low reverse clutch housing in is to use the Sun shell uh, housing and the Sun shell itself go ahead and pre insert it and that gives you kind of a lever and you could push down uh, with that. The key to getting the low reverse clutch housing in is to make sure that it goes in straight. If it goes in tilted like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, it's not gonna go in. And that's when you're gonna struggle. It has to go in perfectly straight. It's gonna be tempted to push down on it with a hammer or with your fist or something like that. Don't do it, because if you get it stuck in there, it's even a bigger pain in the butt than it is. Again, if you don't have the tool and you don't have the, uh, time uh, you could try using this and again this is kind of a a bigger handle and you could push down uh, with it again it might work for you but by all means the red handle tool is far and above the best it'll take you seconds uh, without this or without even using the sun shell uh, you're looking at some frustration but again be patient and if you're using the rollerized system like I am I'll put mine roller bearing in there so that it's ready for action. Next thing we want to do is take our snap ring and go ahead and mount that. You might be able to see there's a bevel. Right? It slopes down flat and then slopes down flat and slopes down. So this bevel part you want facing up. You want that facing up in the case this bevel part right it's straight and then it dives that's the bevel so this part faces up let's go ahead and mount it into our case there's many ways to mount the snap ring in there again bevel side facing up facing the camera 
easiest way I find is to pick a spot to start. Starting in one spot, here we're starting there, just in between the pressure points. And then just push down your snap ring again gradually so that it starts across there. And then I like to take either a big screwdriver or the tool we use to get out the snap ring. Remember we made that custom tool in video number one or number two. Just a screwdriver where we cut a notch out. Then I like to gradually go around pushing that snap ring down as we go. Work it so you get uh, one part of the tab within and then gradually go around pushing until you get the entire thing in. And eventually you'll get her to seat. It's a little tricky. You'll get her. And again, you can tell when it's seated, that bottom groove will be on there. Let's see if we can get you down there. And you can see it's seated on the bottom groove there. Next up in our assembly, we'll take our sun shell assembly. And again, the sun shell. If you are not using a rollerized system, right, a rollerized low reverse clutch, you'll want to use a washer like this. Ideally, use a nylon one. This washer is actually the one that I took off with the tangs, but your kit will probably include a nylon or a plastic one with the little nubs. So again, they're both uh, replaceable. Actually, the plastic one is preferred. Uh, this one tends to take out the low reverse clutch when it fails or when the clearance is not there, or when there's metal shrapnel uh, going through. This one, on the other hand, tends to uh, absorb it. In other words, it eats it. Uh, it. It locks itself into the plastic, buries itself into there. So it's actually preferred to, to use this one over this one. But again, whatever your kit uses is what you should use. I'm not using either one because again, I'm using a rollerized system. And again, that goes on the bottom. The sun chum goes in these holes, right? So these tabs, these tabs go into these holes. Again, I'm using a rollerized assembly. You're probably not. So you want to put that washer on there, some transmission lube, and then we're going to put that assembly down into the system. Put it over your output shaft. Make sure it goes down there. And now it's probably not in all the way, so what you want to do is take it and jiggle it. And you'll know when it seats. It'll be all the way down there. Then once it's down, what you want to do, rotate it, make sure your assembly moves nice and smooth. When it's down all the way in there, you'll see your shell tab will be lower than this hole in the side of the case. Right? It'll be lower than the side of the case. Again, you'll know it's in, you'll, you'll be able to uh, feel it for sure. Next thing you want to do is take your sun gear, right? Notice there's a, an indent on this side and it's flat on this side. So again, take your groove and your groove goes down into the case on top of our gear, like so. Next up, we take the planetary assembly from before and our needle bearings. Needle bearings go on first. The bearings themselves go down. Right, so this part is facing up. Right, so the flat part is facing up. Just put it onto your 
gear, like so. Then take your planetary assembly, right, the planet. Put your washer on here, black side facing up. Now remember when we're putting our front planetary on, we wanna line up the holes on our output shaft. That hole on the output shaft, as you can see, we want to align that with the hole on our front planetary. So we want both holes to be lined up when we're putting them in. Go ahead and get those two holes lined up. There you can see it in the planetary, in the housing. And we've got them lined up. Next thing we want to do is raise our output shaft up to its highest point. So all we're going to do is take our tool and turn the screw till we get it to the highest point that she'll go to. There we go. Now what we've done is effectively raised our output shaft up into there, and that's gonna give us more room to put that uh, snap ring on. But first what we wanna do is put our ring gear onto there. So we have our ring gear, and of course our bronze washer. Bronze washer goes into there. Take the entire assembly, pin it down. On top of our front planetary, and just go ahead and turn it, and it should fit down there, like so. And now what we want to do is take our selective washers. Again, we chose these in video number 17, our selective uh, washers. Here I'm using two shims and a uh, selective washer. And what you want to do is plop those onto the top there. blocking the screen view for you but as you can see we put the uh, shims and the selective washer onto the output shaft and now what we need to do is take our our snap ring and we want to apply that onto the output shaft now to do that I like to use a uh, I don't know if you call them nipex that's what I call them uh, nipex or kinipex uh, these, uh, what's the part number on there? Uh, 4521200. Uh, it's got a special tip on the end. You can kind of see. It's got a groove tip on the end where we can put the snap ring. And what we do is take our tool, take the snap ring, and it fits in there nicely right inside the groove and it doesn't uh, disappear for us so again it's it's very uh, convenient way to do it very convenient and the 30 degree angle also helps as we go to push it in let me show you what I'm talking about take your snap ring once you're on there, again, just use your fingers, push down around the sides. Just pushing down around the sides. Either here or here. And the snap ring goes right on there. Again, super easy to use. Twist around. Again, she's on easily takes two seconds with that special tool. 
And again, once you get that snap ring in there, uh, you want to check your uh, end play clearance. Uh, we did that already, and that's how we know the selectors are there. Check uh, video 17, and you'll see exactly what our uh, clearances are and how we uh, went about choosing those selectives as well as the shims. Next, what we'll do is check our second uh, clearance, make sure we get our end play correctly. And what you want to do is take one of the uh, selective washers, looks like so. I think there's uh, 15 of them. And that goes right onto the top of the output shaft. Next time we'll get deeper into it and I'll show you how to choose that selective uh, washer. Again, there's many to choose from and getting it right is super important.